Welcome back. Our next talk is from Felix, Felix Antoine Fortin from the University of Laval. He'll be talking about Magic Castle. Is that okay? Is it my turn? Yes. yes. All right, good. Uh, hi, uh, my name, as uh, Simon said, I, uh, my name is Felix Antoine Fortin. I'm the a uh, new team lead of the research software development team that is being built at Investeva. And I'm going to talk to you about uh, today about Magic Castle, which is a project that I've been uh, working on since around 2017 uh, in collaboration with uh, Compute Canada in order to solve an issue that I found in Compute Canada. So, uh, uh, so for those who are not uh, aware, uh, in, in Canada, we have a what is called a Canadian digital research infrastructure that is currently uh, managed by an organization named Compute Canada, which is a form of different organization across the Canada. But the most important part is that we have uh, supercomputers and data centers across Canada. Um, there's five of them that are mostly new, four of them are HPC cluster that are used and freely available to anyone, any researchers in Canada. And we also have a big data center that is uh, doing cloud, so a major uh, OpenStack deployment uh, that are available, that is available to uh, researchers in Canada. So um, as a, a staff of Laval University, I've been helping uh, researchers from across Canada and mainly uh, Laval University uh, researchers on how to use those infrastructure. And eventually we also teach those users how they can use uh, HPC cluster in Canada to do their research. And so in Canada, we uh, across Canada, we have a, uh, as an average and those numbers are probably not uh, uh, up to date, but you can imagine that we do around 150 workshops per year uh, across Compute Canada, and those efforts are coordinated. So uh, someone in BC uh, can collaborate with someone in Quebec in order to eventually put up a training that is hosted in different institutions. Uh, most of our workshop, uh, so we do Python, we do Spark, and most of these workshops uh, try to use the HPC software environment because we are teaching those programming, those uh, how to use a scheduler notion in order for Compute Canada users to get better at using HPC cluster and have a better usage of the, of the uh, different environment. Uh, main issue that we found in 2017 that in order to uh, be trained on how to use an HPC cluster, you need to have an HPC cluster account. And if you're just starting your training, if you're just uh, getting used to uh, training on a cluster, you might not have that account. And so for training, what we used to do is build, uh, is request what we call guest account on our production system. So that's, that's an issue because first, uh, the, the process was not, in, at the time, the process was not very uh, well done. Uh, it took a few days in order to get guest accounts and you end up with uh, potentially issues while doing your workshops. If there are downtimes with a cluster, your workshops have, have issues. And the other aspect that was not really fun was that you would have to run potentially training jobs next to production jobs that are doing like actual research. And we might not actually need an HPC cluster in order to train how to use an HPC cluster. What we need is the actual software environment. We need a cluster. We need, at least from a software point of view, we just need a replica of an HPC cluster. So I started to ask myself in 2017, could we replicate our current Compute Canada HPC environment for training somewhere else out of an HPC cluster? So we came up with a solution that we call Magic Castle. So Magic Castle is an open source project that instantiate a Compute Canada cluster replica in any major cloud with Terraform and Puppet. So Terraform is a tool that we'll see on the next slide, but what it does is it create virtual machines 
uh, a management node, login node, compute node. It creates the volume, the network, the network ACL, certificates, the DNS record, the password. It installs the software. It configures the instances in order to you get in 20 minutes using only Terraform, you get a replica of a Compute Canada cluster in any major cloud, including Azure, Google, uh, and mainly uh, uh, AWS, and mainly on any OpenStack. Uh, since in Compute Canada, we had this big OpenStack cloud that we could use for our training. So the, the project is hosted on GitHub, has been presented uh, numerous times, and we're going to go through the different aspect of that project today. So there are two components of uh, and two pro main projects that are Magic Castle. Uh, if you go on GitHub and you uh, on Compute Canada Magic Castle, what you will find are the Terraform source. So Terraform is a tool for building, changing, and versioning infrastructure. So they have a special language, which is called the ASHICorp language, that allow you to describe an infrastructure that mean volumes, virtual machines, uh, network, all of that stuff is being uh, installed, is being uh, programmed already in Magic Castle. But Terraform is just a language that allow you to program, uh, describe what your infrastructure, what your infrastructure should be using the ASHICorp language. Uh, so Magic Castle first is a set of Terraform configuration file that allow to replicate a Compute Canada instance, but uh, a Compute Canada cluster. But once this, uh, these instances are created, they need to be configured. So how we configure those instances? We use Puppet. So Puppet is a config management tool uh, that is also using his own language that is Puppet language. And one of the advantage of Puppet is that on each instance, there's an agent that looks at the actual configuration of the instance. And if, if there is some change that does not correspond to what should be the actual configuration of that instance, it is modified automatically. So we have, with this Puppet, we have like in uh, so, some of an always on-call uh, automatic sysadmin that looks at the actual configuration and fix it as much as possible by itself, and it's going to be important for the next uh, for the different next aspect. Uh, Magic Castle does not have the pretension of does not pretend of being the only uh, kid on the block uh, doing HPC in the cloud. It's a very hot subject at the moment, and there are a lot of projects that are available. And I have this, uh, I, I, I've listened recently to a podcast with Kelsey Hightower, which is a uh, principal engineer at Google. And he came up with a very uh, nice quote that I would like you to, to uh, that I would like to read to you, uh, because we are all, it's Magic Castle in the end is some form of a DevOps tool. And Kelsey Hightower has I, I had to say about the DevOps landscape. So he said, when I think about the DevOps landscape, we also we have so many people just like chefs in a restaurant that are experimenting with different ways of doing things. Once they get it, they create those recipes. Those recipes in our world is source code. That's why we always have duplicates in similar projects, because there is going to be one ingredient that's going to be slightly different to make you prefer over something else. So what I'm trying to do here is uh, just list all of these projects. And I think there's a way, uh, there's a lot of potential for collaboration in, uh, uh, among these different projects. And the next slide is going to be, what are the distinguished feature that I think, and one of the designing principle that I uh, came up with when I built Magic Castle. And the first aspect, and one that is not necessarily covered in the, the previous project is that Magic Castle does not, does not have a custom command line interface. The interface in order to interact with Magic Castle is strictly Terraform. What we, uh, what we deliver as a Magic Castle project is just a, uh, Terraform, a Terraform module. Uh, all of our current configuration is strictly managed with Puppet and a bit of a cloud in it, but most of the configuration engine is done with Puppet, which is not common. Uh, but the reason is that Magic Castle, yes, is built is is meant to build uh, HPC cluster in the cloud. But my idea was also to give back some of these modules to our Compute Canada ecosystem 
of HPC cluster that is also using Puppet and being able prob uh, is, uh, probably better, uh, benefit from the module that will be built uh, inside of Compute Canada. So this is why we went for Puppet instead of Ansible, Chef, or anything else. Uh, the third aspect is uh, one of a pet peeve of mine, but SLNX should always be enabled, and I've been enabled on Magic Castle since day one, and it has it's been a, it's been painful. Uh, it is not fun of actually having to make things work with SLNX, but I've learned a lot while doing it, and there's, there's always example of where it actually saved my ass. Uh, just yesterday, we had the CAV of Baron Semedi. Well, because SLNX was running on Magic Castle, the sudo uh, issue was not an issue for, uh, for, for normal user. Normal user on Magic Castle cannot simply run sudo out of the box. So at some point, those efforts will benefit. And I hope they can, like, I can give back to Compute Canada and other HPC cluster on how we can actually activate uh, SLNX. And uh, we, I wanted to make sure that I wouldn't be the single uh, point of uh, resources and information about Magic Castle. So I tried to maintain as much as possible an extensive user documentation. So those are the guiding principles that I try to maintain while developing Magic Castle that are potentially uh, distinguishing features from uh, the other project that I've shown you on the slides before. But if they, even if they are not, uh, as I said, there's always room for collaboration and things to inspire uh, each other on these hot subject that is HPC cluster in the cloud. So what do you get when uh, you actually build a uh, Magic Castle? So when you download a, a Magic Castle release. So uh, the infrastructure is built among three instances that are deploying services. The first type of instance is just a typical login node on which you can uh, connect with SSH through the internet. But since uh, one of my mandate in Compute Canada was always to try to find new services that allow uh, ease of access to our HPC cluster, uh, we also, when you start a Magic Castle cluster, you get a Jupyter Hub with all of a series of tools, and uh, you also get a global endpoint in order, again, to be able to teach users how to, to how, for example, to use Globus. All of the main uh, management services are running on a single instance that I call management one. So we're going to see uh, on the next slide, what are these services, but there's our database, LDAP, uh, Puppet server, and all that stuff. And finally, you have the compute instances on which the actual job uh, are running. And I probably forgot to mention it, but when we create Compute Canada cluster, we mean a Slurm cluster. So uh, all across Canada, we are using uh, Slurm as a scheduler. So this is just the, this is deploying a Slurm scheduler and not another scheduler. So when you want to actually use uh, Magic Castle, as I said, you are actually using a uh, Terraform module that is composed in a single text file that we call the main interface. So when you download a tarball or a zip file of Magic Castle, this is what the release looks like. And the first file that you will find is main.tf. So this is the file that we expect user to modify. Uh, all of the other files that describe the infrastructure are available to modify. But uh, all of the main is where the, the, the first entry point for common users. So there are four sections for a main uh, module file for, for Magic Castle. Uh, you, you eventually, you, you, you happen to select your provider, but what we do is we release actually a tarball for, uh, for, for each uh, cloud provider. So when you go on Magic Castle uh, webpage, you actually download the release for the uh, cloud provider that, that you need. Then uh, there, uh, you're, you're going to describe what kind of instances that you need, and then you're going to describe how much user, et cetera. And eventually, uh, you're going to say, well, I would like my cluster to be registered inside of a DNS, so you can configure a DNS configuration. We're going to go through those four sections. The first section is very easy. Source the name of the provider. As I said, there is one tarball per provider, whether it is AWS, Azure, 
uh, Google Cloud, OpenStack, or OVH. All of these providers are supported out of the box. And when you download one, this line is already filled with the correct provider. The next step is actually naming your cluster, which I think is the funniest, the, the, the funnest part of actually building a cluster is finding a funny name for your cluster. And now you can that, like, do that like multiple times a day. Uh, so I go through all of the uh, Malaverl universe multiple times a year. Uh, so you choose a cluster name, you choose a domain. Ideally, you actually own the domain name. So you will be able to, uh, Magic Castle will be able to record for you the different uh, DNS record for, for your cluster. So you can use the domain name instead of the IP address to connect to your cluster. Uh, you select the image. So Magic Castle only supports CentOS uh, kind of image and it supports CentOS 7 and 8. Uh, I'll cover that later as to what the future uh, brings us regarding CentOS. Uh, you can then, since we are mainly uh, targeting cluster for training, you can create automatically a number of guest account and Magic Castle is going to create a random password that you can then distribute to your, to your user. Uh, we'll cover uh, how you could actually create user uh, without going to uh, guest accounts uh, later. Uh, and then you specify your public key. Uh, when you create your cluster, you get a, an administrator account. Uh, and the only way to connect to that administrator account is with your uh, SSH public. Next step is just designing your cluster. So you are defining which type of instances. So the size, the number of core, quantity of memory for your management node, your login nodes, and your uh, compute nodes. And as you can see, the compute nodes is a list. So you can create an heterogeneous uh, cluster. And at any point of during the life of your cluster, you can modify the count manually. Uh, and for example, if you would like more compute node, you can adjust the number of compute node, reapply the main, and the cluster is going to adjust by itself without any intervention from yourself. In, uh, <coughs> except for modifying the, the main file. Uh, then you define some storage. So the storage is, for now, it's pretty basic. It's an NFS storage of three volumes, one for Ohm, uh, the, the Ohm user, uh, a volume for, for project and a volume for scratch. All of this for now is NFS. And you can then define uh, what's the actual size in gigabytes of these volumes. Uh, then there are different, uh, since all uh, cloud provider has some specificities, uh, you can, uh, there are variables that are available depending on the cloud provider that you've chosen. So for example, if you like to attach a uh, Google GPU, there are some variables that you can uh, input. Uh, you can, for example, for Azure, Google, or AWS, you have to define the cloud region. So there are some uh, special variables, but all of these variables are clearly explained in the extensive uh, user document. And then uh, based on the actual input, the, the domain name uh, that you have selected and all the, the previous input, uh, you can create, uh, Magic Castle can create for you automatically the DNS records. As long as your DNS, uh, your, your host name is, uh, is uh, sorry, is administrated by either Cloudflare or Google DNS for now, uh, we could add some more uh, DNS provider at some point if, if you need uh, another one of these, but those are the main one that we currently use. And all of the, most of the input for the DNS comes from the actual main module. All you have to specify is your, your email uh, most of the time. So once you have completed your main.tf file, what you enter inside of a terminal next to your main.tf file is just Terraform apply and it's going to ask you to confirm that, yes, it is the right infrastructure that you want to build. And automatically for you, it's going to create the instance. And once these instances are created, they are, be, they are being configured by Puppet. And in under 20 minutes, you get a Compute Canada cluster. So as I said, the configuration management is handled by two, uh, two aspects. So the main bootstrap of Puppet is done through the Cloud Emit YAML file. So what it does is it's upgrading the, all of the uh, instances. First step is always upgrading all packages. So every time you create a new cluster, you always get the latest uh, revision of all the packages. It has created me a lot of headache of 
being able to support uh, always the latter's version, but I think it is the most secure and most and the best way of actually uh, handling those uh, those aspects. So the cloud in it install Puppet, create a Puppet server, uh, wait for your certificate, and reboot all. Once the uh, Puppet is bootstrapped, everything is rebooted, and then Puppet handles all of the configuration. So the different compute. Uh, login and management node, communicate with the Puppet server, ask for their uh, configuration, and configure, uh, install the packages, configure the file, et cetera, automatically for you. Uh, the configuration management is also installed with console. So console is a service mesh that you probably won't find uh, very commonly on HPC cluster. I use it to do, uh, to do, uh, to uh, determine when services are available and as a key store value to make uh, available the information about, for example, the compute instances uh, configuration. So automatically, which is not normally easy to do with Slurm, we actually generate automatically the uh, Slurm configuration node file with console. So when a new compute node uh, logs in, it register its configuration in console and using a service called console template, the uh, configuration file is updated automatically everywhere on the cluster. So it means that at any point we can add and remove uh, nodes on uh, out of uh, Slurm configuration without, uh, without any issues. And we also use console to aggregate the uh, CPU architecture. Since on the cloud and mostly on Compute Canada cloud, you can get instances with AVX or AVX 12 or uh, AVX 512, sorry, or AVX 2. Uh, we need to gather these to select a common set of module that will work on every architecture from our compute instances. For you. So we use console to select that. As I said, uh, we can generate automatically the uh, Slurm configuration uh, by registering automatically with console. And one of the nice aspects of this is we, we also automatically, if we have an heterogeneous uh, cluster, we now automatically compute the weight of the different instances. So if you request a job without a GPU and with low memory, you are going to get the low memory uh, node first and only uh, the GPU if everything is, uh, is allocated uh, before. So all of these weights are computed uh, automatically by a small plugin that I've developed for, for console and so on. So what is an HPC cluster without software? Uh, so as I said, there's two operating systems that are supported, CentOS 7 and CentOS 8. I don't know what's the future for CentOS 8 in Magic Castle. Would it be Rocky Linux? I, I, I don't know. Uh, I can ask this question over and over. Uh, in the end, the future depends on Compute Canada. Uh, Magic Castle will always try to first serve uh, the interest of growing and building workshops for Compute Canada and new instances of Compute uh, Canada in the future. So when we steer in a direction, uh, Magic Castle is probably going to follow in that direction or support uh, Rocky Linux plus CentOS. As I said, there are batteries included. So a free IPA for user management. There's NFS, Slurm, Global Sandpoint, we installed Jupyter. Uh, of course, there is Elmod provided by CDMFS. We have a no VNC desktop singularity. Everything is prepackaged and installed through uh, Puppet. And if it is not, it is generally provided by CVMFS. So uh, I think most of you on the call are already familiar with CVMFS. So it's a scalable, reliable, and low-maintenance software distribution service that is used in Compute Canada, but it is now used also by uh, the European Environment for Scientific Software Installation. I don't know if you changed the acronym yet, but... Uh, and all these softwares are built with uh, EasyBuild, and this is how we can actually provide a cluster, an ESPs cluster in the cloud with tons and tons and thousands and thousands of futures uh, and software. It's just by mounting CVMFS and whatever the user needs at some point during each PC cloud cluster, it is available. So it's fantastic. And it's the initial point that gave us the idea of actually building an HPC cluster in the cloud. Otherwise we would have to rebuild everything at every time and it, it, would, it would be a waste. Uh, there are more batteries included. So as I said, you can create guest account, 
But now when you create a Magic Castle cluster, you also get a free uh, sign up portal. So directly on your cluster, users and workshop uh, attendees can register themselves with their email and create a password and their own username. And Magic Castle is going to handle all of the business of creating the home, creating the password, creating the, the account, uh, all of that through a fantastic project that is called uh, Moki, that is uh, inter uh, building a web interface on top of free IPA, and that was built by University of Buffalo. Again, free IP also have a web interface that is available through which as an admin, you can manage users. Uh, since uh, Magic Castle is also a development platform for Jupyter Hub use cases, so it has created tons of plugins that are listed here, uh, by of which I'm the main uh, developer. Uh, you can look them up, whether it's Jupyter Helmod, so a web interface for Helmod uh, through Jupyter, uh, a uh, web proxy for Pairview. Uh, we also created a form for Slurm to launch a uh, job through Jupyter Hub on Slurm. And all of that is packaged in a Puppet module that is called Puppet Jupyter Hub that is currently used in Compute Canada. So what I said, I'm trying to seed uh, ideas in Compute Canada on HPC cluster. Our cluster are now using the Puppet Jupyter Hub that is used in Magic Castle to deploy their own uh, Jupyter Hub on the, uh, their HPC cluster. But when, what, what, what about Terraform is too difficult? I get this point like many times when I gave call on Magic Castle, where so it created a new idea. Like, what if we actually build a web interface for Magic Castle? Uh, so we call it on a, uh, it's not very original, but it's called just MC Hub. So last summer I had an intern, a brilliant intern that came up with, with the project that is called Magic Castle Hub or MC Hub, which is again, also available on GitHub. So the idea is to improve the workflow of Magic Castle by going from a text file where you have to install Terraform, download release file to just a web app where you actually fill just as you would on a text file, but now you are filling a web form and that web form has some of the options that you would have to enter in text uh, in Magic Castle, you now are, uh, there is now, uh, they are now being filled automatically by MC Hub. So the instance name, uh, the quotas that are available, all of that is available to you. And the only thing that you need is a browser and an account on the instance of MC Hub. Uh, it also validates that your quotas are, uh, are sufficient for the amount of the, the cluster that you would like to configure. Uh, as I said, all the different parameters that I've shown you before can be uh, instantiated with uh, Magic Castle Hub. Uh, an instance count, floating IPs, all of that. Magic Castle, add the mo uh, confirming the Terraform, uh, displaying the progress, all of that is done in uh, Vue.js. So instead of looking, verifying manually your, uh, your quotas, you can look at pie chart. Uh, Instead of modifying a file, you can just fill a web form and reading documentation. Well, now it's self-explained. So anyone can actually build a cluster. This is what it looks like uh, when uh, from a user point of view. So you can create, you, you click on the create cluster button, but there's also an admin view. If you are managing an OpenStack project, you can delete uh, clusters for your users, for example. So MC Hub is composed of three projects, a web front end in Vue.js and a back end in Flask and Terraform. Uh, all of that is packaged inside of the Docker container that you can start on your own desktop and run the actual application. And there's also an Ansible playbook that deploy a SAML authenticated MC Hub. So the MC Hub currently allow you to like put a front that will deploy a Magic Castle cluster on in open source, open stack project. So TK, key takeaways, Magic Castle is a major uh, project, a mature project with a rich ecosystem of all of these uh, spin-off and projects that replicate an HPC cluster in a cloud with Terraform and Puppet. And once deployed, MCOB, the new project can be used by anyone. Uh, it, they, they don't have to be a system admin. They don't even have to be an HPC analyst. They could be a simple HPC cluster user can actually deploy an HPC cluster on OpenStack using the web interface. So there are 
tons of future directions. Uh, we don't have like official uh, user meetings or uh, web distribution lists, but I'm uh, very active on the issues on Magic Castle. We are planning, for example, to look at how we could uh, integrate OFED to support uh, uh, I, sorry, uh, high performance uh, network connectivity in, in the Dethum cloud. Uh, we're also looking at Luster file system, automatic uh, compute instances uh, scaling, and eventually support external IDP. As I said, the account currently are uh, local to the cluster, but uh, at some point, we can imagine, for example, to compute, uh, to connect uh, Google authentication or compute kind of authentication on the cluster. And I think I'm done for my half an hour. I can take questions now. Yes, thank you for the talk. Um, if there are any questions, then people can raise their hand in uh, the Zoom meeting. And we already have a question, so I will unmute the first person. Ask them to unmute. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, I'm uh, Sabri from Oslo. So, when uh, doing training, it's, it's very important that the users get um, a closer representation of the original cluster as possible. For example, mounting locations, how how the, how to get access data. Um, uh, so, when you uh, spawn these cloud instances, uh, how do you? Uh, handle the data transfers like uh, is, is a lot of data transferred from uh, to the cluster when it's initiated or um, like do you have a, do you have something already in the cloud that you copy for example sharing data for a course for example uh, so most of the so for now most of the, the courses that we teach in compute canada have uh, very little data that are required by the course so they are uh, they are copied by the instructor or the, the person who actually instantiated the cluster uh, the, the hours or the days before uh, teaching the workshop. And Maxime could tell you more about that since he's, he has done it uh, quite a few times in, in Compute Canada using Magic Castle clusters. But for now, uh, there's we uh, haven't taught a lot of uh, workshops that require a lot of uh, data transfer to the cloud. So the issue of transferring data hasn't come up on, on, on with our system. Is there anybody else with a question? Oh, Kenneth has a question. Yeah, you, you mentioned that one of the guiding principles or, or the the things you try to stick to with Magic Castle is that you're using Terraform and Puppet as a front end, as a user interface. Um, now, I, I noted a question down that I was going to ask you, do you feel that's limiting in terms of um, letting people use Magic Castle? So they have to both learn a bit of Terraform and a bit of Puppet. But I guess the MC Hub thing largely uh, is an answer to that. Yeah. Uh, we. You're right. Uh, we, fire, we we found uh, I, I found that I had at least coming from, for example, HPC analysis inside, inside of Compute Canada, I had to answer questions regarding uh, the, the the first limit. I would say regards uh, uh, input validation inside of the Terraform module. So and uh, but uh, Ashicorp started to add features where you can at least do some form of static validation on the inputs, but uh, it is not really like up to speed on there's, you can always like input the right, uh, the, the wrong instance name or and all of that. So currently the idea is to use, uh, yes, Magic Castle Hub as uh, the next step of uh, like building this uh, auto filled and error-free uh, interface for, for, for Magic Castle based on our experience with our user inside of Compute Canada. Uh, so yeah, I, it is kind of limiting, uh, but what I want to avoid is, and Magic Castle Hub has some other, uh, some other guiding principles that you can avoid these, 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 uh, these limits, but I, I, if I wanted to make sure that uh, the Terraform uh, module developer were the one uh, being bugged with new API versions and not me. 
So if I if there is a new version of the Google Cloud API, I just want to make sure that I can update a bit my Terraform file, but all of the handling of the uh, talking to the REST API is actually done through, through Terraform. Yeah, that makes total sense, but you could have a, a lightweight, terra, uh, not Terraform CLI, but an MC CLI. Mm -hmm. where, could, where, do you, but... where, where do you prevent that people have to get inside the guts of Terraform and, and Puppet? So it, because it's two, two tools that may be a bit of an, a limiting factor or, or too big of a hurdle for people to start using it. Normally, so uh, from uh, the, the people who are like only using, uh, only meaning to use the cluster as it is, shouldn't have to touch Puppet. Uh, it's, it's, most of the time it's, it's, it's a right assertion. Uh, at some point, everyone would like to modify something. So, uh, but there is also some aspect of configuration that are available through YAML file that I haven't touched that uh, can at some point happen to uh, tell Puppet what, what should be configured. Uh, but I agree, uh, but uh, maybe a, a lightweight Magic Castle uh, CLI could, could happen at some point. Uh, I just need to maybe get some feedback on what are the main pain points that were not, uh, that, that happened on, on the command line and that are not so painful that you actually need an entire uh, user interface, just like we, we propose with MCL. Mm -hmm. And then in, since there are, I think, no other questions and we do have time, um, you mentioned a couple of other projects. One of them um, will be presented tomorrow, Cluster in the Cloud. Um, can you say something about the key differences between Magic Castle and, and some of these? Like do, you, you mentioned, some of the things you, you want to work on here are covered in other tools already, like the scaling thing, sure. which I think Cluster in the Cloud does, does pretty well. Yeah. But are, are there projects that have good support for fast interconnect or things like Luster? Is that out there already or? Uh, at that, I don't know. Uh, I know. So I, I, I think one of the uh, key difference between Cluster in the Cloud and Magic Castle and uh, is when uh, I think, uh, and I could be wrong, but I, I think cluster in the cloud actually instantiate first a single virtual machine from which uh, it deploys a, an entire cluster. Uh, Magic Castle try to use, uh, try to deploy all of these instances at first. And then if you like, if you'd like some more instances, you have to go through the, 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 main, uh, the main text file. Uh, and uh, cluster in the cloud use Ansible to configure the different instances and the instances are actually configured with Ansible from uh, the, the compute node are actually configured from the first instances used with Ansible instead of uh, having Puppet, for example. Mm -hmm. So those uh, those are, I think, key differences. Uh, if, if you prefer Ansible, I think, yeah, cluster as a cloud is probably the, the uh, the other best solution out there uh, that is available. Uh, then it comes to uh, it comes to different feature and probably uh, the as I said the, the main idea behind Magic Castle was always to provide cluster for workshops. Uh, then it evolves into like some potentially uh, bigger cluster in the cloud that are more static. Uh, so the the, the automatic scaling has not been an, an issue so far and not been like so much requested. Uh, and there's also, so when I mentioned SLinux, uh, I also have this, there is also behind uh, in, on my, uh, an afterthought of trying to make sure that a Magic Castle is, cluster is as secure as possible. And at the automatic scaling, at some point you have to provide some keys that allow your cluster to uh, interact with your cloud provider. And at some point, yes, it can save you costs uh, if you are, uh, if, since you are only uh, deploying instances when you need them. But uh, if at some point some miner finds your cluster and hack it because there's some, some issue and you have your, uh, your, your, your cloud keys and uh, 
directly in, in the clear on your cluster, they're going to find it and it's going to cost a lot. So this, and there, there are probably like solutions for that. And I think uh, it's, if, if either even cluster in the cloud or other projects actually find like secure solutions for those, uh, for those problems, it's, it would be interesting to actually collaborate on, on those issues because uh, how you can actually manage like securely uh, the automatic scaling of instances is, I, I think it's an open problem. Well, I, I think I, I could be wrong and, and, and I'm sure Matt will explain it to us tomorrow, but the automatic scaling that cluster in the cloud does, doesn't actually need the, the keys or the password for your, for your cloud instance. What it does, it, it really sets up a, a static Slurm cluster. So at that point, it does need your key, but I think you can just give it the key whenever it needs it. Um, and it doesn't, it doesn't have to save it. It sets up the whole Slurm cluster and it, then it uses or abuses the Slurm power saving features where if no jobs are going to the nodes, it just powers down the nodes. So the VMs are sitting there, but they're not running. Um, and I think I, it can just auto start them. And for that, it doesn't need to talk to the, the AWS API or anything like that. I understand. Uh, no. and, and their cluster in the cloud does have the I want to say a, a proper CLI. That's not really true. It, it's like scripts left and right, uh, but it does give you give you like a front end to talk to that you don't even actually have to touch anything Ansible. So if you don't like Ansible mm -hmm. or Puppet or whatever, it, it's not really relevant. You can uh, you can give it a script to install additional packages, and it's just a regular Bash script that it picks up on if it finds it. Um, but yeah, I, there's there's I think there's some ideas there that you can probably use here as well if you're interested in that in, in Magic Castle. And setting up a discussion with, with people like Matt working on tools that are very similar is probably worthwhile, yeah. Yeah. especially for the security thing. That's a good point. OK. Uh, I don't see any other questions. Anything in Slack, Simon? No, Alan had a small question, but I think Maxime is handling that in the Slack channel. So I think and, we're- and That was your question about the logo. Ah, yeah, the logo. So the, the, the unicorn and the rainbow combination, is that the logo of Magic Castle? No, uh, if, uh, if it's not, it, it should be. <laughs> yeah, it I really think should I, be. I, I would need to buy the rights on that image before uh, actually making it the logo. But yeah, it is, it's a, recurring uh, question of where do we, when do we get an actual logo for Magic Castle? And it's, it, it used to be like the Disney castle and then we, uh, we were afraid of being sued, so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if, yeah. if, if I, I this should, becomes I, the logo, I wanna have stickers. Or... <laughs> I should contact uh, Robert, uh, design, uh, graphic designer. They, uh, TAC always come up with very nice, very yeah. nice icons and graphics and stuff. Yeah, I yeah. should hire them. <laughs>